Okay, everybody. It's been several months and I think I've spent enough time on the Polygon Extrata 6. So let's give this bike a proper long-term review. I made an Extrata playlist with all the videos that featured this bike, including the unboxing and first impressions video, as well as a comparison of all the models in the range. I'll put a link to that playlist in the description. So let's get started. Let's cover the basics of the bike. First, this is a 2021 Extrata 6 in 27.5 in a size medium. I'm 5'9", and based on my measurements, the size calculator on Bikes Online recommended a size medium 29er. The 29ers weren't available at the time, so I grabbed the 27.5. From a fit perspective, the 27.5 was perfectly fine for me. In fact, having the smaller wheel set really felt good when I needed quick bursts of acceleration. It also added to the nimbleness of the bike. This is not an excessively long or slack bike, but it's not short or steep either. I'm definitely someone who is not fond of climbing, and pedaling efficiency is something I notice. As a hardtail, pedaling efficiency is something that just comes with the package. But all hardtails are not created equal. Geometry plays a role here. I felt very centered between the wheels, which made for a very efficient pedaling bike. On climbs, it kept the front wheel firmly on the ground. I didn't have to make any weight shifts except on extremely steep sections. Even in those sections, the bike held traction and is noticeably better on the climbs than my Ragley Marley. I was also able to use a harder gear which made the climbs quicker. We spend more time pedaling up than we do going down, and on the downhills the bike felt controlled. I didn't have any issues on steep roll-ins, and once committed the Extrata felt stable. Now this isn't a downhill bike, not even close, but that's why they make expensive downhill bikes for really crazy stuff. But on the average trail, this bike was excellent. I thought the bike was nimble when winding through tight single track, and that's a byproduct of the somewhat forward riding position. The result is a lot of fun through winding twisty trails. After a few months, the components have held up well. Let's start with the fork. The XCR32 coil fork continued to work as expected. It was smooth and over small bumps, it felt great and was supportive during hard pedaling and G-outs. Shimano Dior drivetrain? Not much to say here. It stayed smooth and quiet. I'm pretty surprised that I didn't have to make any adjustments to it. In my opinion, having a smooth 11-speed 1x drivetrain on a budget mountain bike is a huge plus. Kudos to Shimano for making an affordable 1x11 setup. The Shimano two-piston brakes also had no issues. Modulation was good. The stopping power for someone my weight was plenty on trail rides. I'm not a fan of the longer levers, but I've gotten spoiled by high-end brakes. Stock Entity tires did the job for what they're designed for. They were fast rolling and worked best on dry hard pack. When things got wet and muddy, the tires caked up a bit. The tires are also not tubeless ready. They're traditional wire bead tires. The wheels performed fine, there were no issues. The hubs are very quiet. They don't make a lot of sound, so it's definitely a good idea to use the free bell that Bikes Online gives you. The wheels are tubeless compatible as well. You just need some tubeless tape, valves, and sealant. So I installed a pair of Continental Trail King tires on the bike to see how they handle a tubeless setup. The tires sealed up well and are holding air fine. The frame was able to clear the 2.4 inch Contis. On the fork, however, it was more of a snug fit. There was not much space between the arch of the fork and the tire. I would recommend keeping the tires at 2.3 inches or less. I had a few gripes with the bike that are worth mentioning, mainly their setup items. The first is the internal cable routing. The shift cable and brakes should be both routed through the left side cable port. It makes more sense to leave the right side unused for those that decide to install a dropper post. This bike came with the brake hose routed through the right side port. Now this adds an extra step of having to reroute the rear brake to the left side. This will most likely require a brake bleed, which is an unnecessary step and adds cost. The second is the seat tube itself. I previously mentioned this in the first impressions video. The 27.2mm seat post limits your dropper post options. 
Going with a 30.9mm or a 31.6mm seat post would really open up the possibilities here. The third item is that I'd like to see a better chainstay protection. The bike comes with a thin vinyl sticker to cover the chainstay. That will only last so long and it's noisy. I really like the frame construction on this bike. It's one of the nicer frames I've seen. The welds are clean and the paint job is well done. The tan and gray has really grown on me. The tapered head tube will give you better fork options down the road. The lifetime frame warranty is also a nice touch. The other standout is the Shimano Dior group set. What I like about Shimano is that all their one by group sets have very similar performance. The main difference between the Dior group set and the more expensive group sets like SLX, XT, and XTR really comes down to weight saving materials and the use of bushings instead of bearings to lower costs. The third standout item is the Entity Void Saddle. Yeah, I know saddles are very personal, and this one is so comfy that I stopped using a chamois. If you currently own a Polygon and have this saddle, let me know what you think of it in the comments. I think this thing should be available aftermarket. So let's recap. This is a nimble, fun bike that will suit riders that want a bike that climbs and descends with equal prowess. The bike shines on flowy single track with lots of rolling terrain and tight turns. If I could have only one bike to get around on for everyday use, the Xtrada is the bike I would ride. This bike is best suited for the average rider that wants to spend lots of time in the saddle or the beginning rider that wants a bike they can grow into. For less than $1,000, this bike is definitely a great value. That being said, for $200 more, the Xtrada 7 is an even greater value. Check out the video comparison of the Xtrada series in the description. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share with someone who would find it helpful. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.